So I'd like to welcome you to this topic webinar on importing a PX Synchrotron dataset into Chrysalis Pro. I'm your host, Mark Del Campo. I'm a senior application scientist here at Rigaku Americas Corporation. If you are a current Rigaku customer, I invite you to join us on the Rigaku X-Ray Forum. And now on to the actual webinar. So first, let's talk about the normal situation for using Chrysalis Pro for data in the home lab. You're going to describe the instrument fully in the PAR file. You're going to run an automatic calibration experiment using a standard sample, and you'll fully know the geometry of the system at any distance. Then you'll run a test data collection and processing on that standard sample. The whole geometry of the system will be totally worked out. Then you can run data collection on the unknown experimental sample where that's the only variable and process that data. So the situation we're gonna talk about today is importing the data from the synchrotron. Here you're gonna have the data set on the experimental sample. And then you're gonna to try to describe the instrument setup when you import the images and create the PAR file. And then you're gonna hope everything goes well and you can process the experimental data. So depending on the image format, or let's say the header accuracy of those images, the instrument model is going to be only partially known, let's say to almost completely known. And that will make your import either easy or difficult on a, on a spectrum. And of course, uh, formats that we've already processed with Chrysalis Pro, the known formats will be on the easy side. And the unknown formats, which you'll have to use the Esperanto importer, would be on the more difficult side. But on this Venn diagram, you'll see there is an overlap. So you can have a known format that ventures into the difficult area. Prior knowledge is always going to help you move forward. Do you know the geometrical setup of the beamline you used? Do you have photos of the beamline setup if you don't know the setup? Do you have a data set on a standard sample that you collected at the same time you ran your experimental samples? Good standards, lysozyme, cytidine, both really good. If you use an Iger detector, are your images in the HDF5 format? Currently, Chrysalis Pro does not import from that image file format, and you will have to convert to CBF files first. And there are converters available. The first thing you'd want to do when importing a data set is inspect the images, inspect the headers of the images, and rename the images if they have a funny format, because Chrysalis Pro is going to try to read the first image and then import all the images to the last image. So if they have a funny wording or format, you'll want to rename them. And on the right here in parentheses, there's just a few programs that you could use to do these things. Data sets that we're going to work on today, we're going to take two synchrotron data sets. What you see in the table on this slide are nine synchrotron data sets that I obtained from proteindiffraction.org. These are all publicly available data sets. I imported and processed all nine of these successfully. Today, we'll just go over the first two in the list, which are both from Pilatus detectors. The first one would be an easy example. And the second one is one that should be easy, but turns out not to be, and we have to do some additional steps. And the second data set is actually from a protein from SARS-CoV-2. So it's very topical and it's fitting that it gave me some headache. So let's try one or two of these data sets. So the way that I'm going to do this webinar is that I will work on the right side of the screen in Chrysalis Pro and I have a little outline or cheat sheet on the left side to show you which step I'm working on. The first thing we want to do is locate double click the Chrysalis Pro version we're going to use. So I have version 4079A for 64-bit systems here. I'm going to double click it. Chrysalis Pro will open. I will select a data set from the list. This is an old Lysozyme data set just to get into Chrysalis Pro. And then for our next step, 
we need to move on to importing the data set we wish to import. So we're going to choose on the left side of Chrysalis Pro this import export button, click it. And then we've got a menu here to select import, select known image format, click OK. Click on Dectris because these are Pilatus CBF images, click OK. Now we have our importer menu. We want to click on browse. And in our file tree, we want to find the first image of the data set. This is the first CBF file. And if I scroll down, this is going to image 750. So I make sure the first one is selected. I click open and it shows up right next to the browse button. That's the first image. Now Chrysalis Pro reads the headers and you can see pulls in some information, the detector distance, the wavelength, the X and Y coordinates of the direct beam and the silicon sensor thickness. On the bottom, you can see it also read successfully the last image automatically, image 750. So if all this image information looks fine and it gets to the last image, it looks pretty good for the import. Now I have a tip number one over here. You can use the information from another PAR file instead of the image header information here from this experiment. So for example, if you had collected your standard sample on a site eating or lysozyme crystal and you imported and processed that successfully, then you can use the PAR file information from that data set for your experimental sample. So all you would do is click this little checkbox, use PAR file information instead of image header, and then browse to the PAR file that you'd like to use the experiment information from, and that's how you would do that. In this case, we're gonna use what comes straight out of the image header, so we're just gonna click Save Run File at this point. We have a chance to change some of the parameters that were read in from these image headers. So you can see the order of these values. We have binning, then detector distance, wavelength, the X and Y coordinates of the direct beam, and the silicon sensor thickness. So here is a chance for us to change any one of these parameters if we knew it to be different than what was read from the image headers. Click OK. Chrysalis Pro now presents us with the experiment list. I select the experiment, this one that I'm trying to import. I click Open Selected. I get an error, which I have to acknowledge. And all this means is I have to select what kind of experiment I'm going to be doing. In this case, a protein experiment, not a small molecule one. Click OK. That brings us into the data set. So the first thing we want to do here is just check some things. So perhaps you'd like to resize the images. Use the plus button to zoom in or the minus button to zoom out. You can use the zoom localizer to get yourself around the image. You can see that there are reflections here. You can change the contrast level if you choose. Maybe that looks about right. You can change the coloration if you choose. I'm going to put it back on x-ray film. The first thing you want to do is make sure that the resolution rings are on the images by clicking on this angstrom button. Because when the resolution rings are present, you have immediate visual indication of whether the center of this ring is right behind this beam stop center. If that looks pretty good, you know the beam center is close to being right. If the beam center were up here on the right side or the corner of the image, that would be a bad sign. Then you'll click on this K icon to turn on the image information. You can see where the goniometer should be for this particular image. If these numbers look about right, then that's good, especially the distance being 285 millimeters. Then I would go to data collection on the right and click on it and click on edit runs. This opens up the scan information. And you'd like to just verify that the scan information makes sense with what you know about this data set. So this is a phi type scan. It's got a start and an end value, a rotation width, a time, 750 images. This looks pretty normal. If it looked abnormal, then you'd probably want to redo the import and figure out what parameter needs to be changed. Click OK. You can also play the data set just to see if there are any problems 
that jump out at you that will make things difficult in addition to just the difficulty of trying to import and process something. I realize that on Zoom, you may just see a few of the images come through because this is coming through pretty quickly, but otherwise everything here looks pretty good. The most critical step for processing an imported data set is going to be auto indexing. If that works, usually everything else goes pretty smoothly. So we're going to click on the top left button here for the lattice wizard. Lattice wizard opens, you've got all these buttons here that do automatic functions and the little menus next to them allow you to modify the function that the big button does. So if we just click on this little menu next to peak search and do peak search with user settings, I recommend for protein data sets using the smart peak search or 3D peak extraction, which will take a little longer. So smart peak search, click OK. It's going to hunt on the images for peaks. When the peak hunting is finished, you can see in the middle of this lattice wizard that 26,000 peaks were found. And so now we want to tell Chrysalis Pro to try to find a unit cell. So we click on unit cell finding. A cell is found. And the reduced cell that it finds, it thinks is a monoclinic primitive cell. There are 60% of the peaks found are indexed to this cell. So that's a pretty good starting percentage that tells me things look like they are working. So once we have this auto indexing solution, we can try to refine it by clicking on the refine instrument model button. And we immediately go from 60% indexed to 85% indexed. That's a really good sign that things are working. We can continue to click on the refine instrument model button and see when we reach convergence of the refinement. And 85.5% seems to be where we converge. Then I recommend that we click on Ewald Explorer and we take a look at the solution of auto indexing in reciprocal space. So I'm gonna right click and move my mouse up to zoom in on all these spots in reciprocal space. I'm gonna click on A star, B star, and C star to look down these axes and see whether all these spots in reciprocal space actually land on the grid for this unit cell. The other really good sign is that there are three sharp peaks in the distribution histograms at the right hand side of the interface with no peaks coming in between the lattice points. Obviously there's a lot of spots here. They go further then our grid of the unit cell, and you can transform these data by going to the menu at the top next to this display button that says ortho, we can select collapse to lattice range, we'll transform all the spots inside the grid. So you can have a better visual indication of whether you've got all these spots lining up correctly. So A star, B star, C star, this looks like a really good auto indexing. So we can leave the Ewald Explorer by clicking on the X here. And we come back out to the Lattice Wizard. So I have a tip number two here. Do not be afraid to repeat steps five and six a few times. So if it doesn't work out, you can rerun the unit cell finding and you can refine again and you can do this until you find the correct cell. Tip number three is sometimes what's wrong is that the X and Y coordinate for the direct beam are not quite right. So there is an option here under unit cell finding, the little menu, unit cell finding with options, to do a find center to try to better establish what the center is. And we're going to go over that with the next data set. You can try to refine things even a little better by going to the little menu next to refine instrument model, doing refine instrument model with user settings, turn off automatic selection of parameters, Make sure the three wobble vectors are turned on, one, two, three. And you can try to refine the aspects of the goniometer as well. Click OK. And now we're up to 86% indexed. Remember, if you want to keep using these customized parameters, you have to go back into the menu, refine instrument model with user settings, click OK. 
86 and a quarter. Try again. Went up a little bit. We're not really getting much better. 86.4%. And then check out the Ewald Explorer. Things look even maybe a little bit better, but it's pretty close to the way it was before. So with this particular example, we have a really good auto indexing. If you want to check the other Bravais lattice types, you can click on lattice transformation. In this particular example, monoclinic primitive is the best uh, we're getting. It's the only higher symmetry cell that fits. So after we have successfully auto indexed the sample, we would like to take care of this beam stop shadow that's on the images by masking it out. And the only reason I bring this up again in this webinar is in the newest version of Chrysalis Pro, we've moved the location of these tools to make it more user-friendly. So right next to this red button here on the bottom right of the image, we have a adjust beam stop option. We select it, we move this window out of our way, we click on edit beam stop, move the window out of our way. We click on put the beam stop overlay on and you can see where the mask is currently. And then we just have to edit parameters for the mask. So I will click on diameter, make the diameter for this cup smaller, 0.6. It's even smaller, take it 0.2. That's about right. I can change the X and Y offset of this center of the mask. So in this particular case, I'm more interested in changing the Y, making it, let's say, minus 10. Went down, maybe that's a little too much. Minus five, that's good. And then if I wanna change the angle, it looks like there's a little bit of angle here. Instead of being just a top down beam stop, I'm going to click on user. And now the angle button is activated and I can put in an angle, let's say one degree, and it moves over, which is probably okay. I'll change the diameter of the holder just a little bit. And now it looks pretty good. Maybe just one more change. And then I want to click on save to par file on exit and click okay. And it will warn me that we're going to update the par file. I click yes, I click exit here. And now I have a beam stop mask that I can use when I process the data set. So to reduce the data here, you're just gonna click on the start stop button, which is in the top right corner of the interface. And you're either gonna do an automatic data reduction or you're gonna do data reduction with options and change a few things. I've already covered the specifics of processing a protein data set with Chrysalis Pro in my previous webinar, Processing a PX Data Set with Chrysalis Pro. If you're interested in that, you can go to this YouTube web address and watch the video, or you can access it from our homepage, www.ragaku.com slash webinars. So at this point, what I wanna do is move to the second data set. So I'll close this data set, and we're gonna repeat the whole process for data set number two. So remember, this is this protein from SARS-CoV-2. So we're going to click on our import export button. We're going to make sure we're on import and known image format. Click OK. We want Dectris, click OK. Browse to the first image. So I have this second data set here. Images, the first data image is one. The last image is 200. So if I clicked on image one and hit OK, you can see the last image loaded properly, image 200. It pulled in information from the image header, which looks correct. I click on save run file. Again, I have a chance to change things if they're incorrect. Click OK. I'm presented with my experiment list. I select this new experiment I'm trying to work on. Click open selected. Acknowledge the error. Click on protein. Click OK. Now I'm into the experiment. In this particular case, it's pretty dark right now, so I'm gonna change the contrast so I can see these spots, and there I can see the spots. I can see this rectangular shadow for the beam stop mask. The resolution rings are on, and it looks like our beam center is close to being correct. I'm gonna click on data collection, click on edit runs, take a look at the scan. 
Now, something that sticks out here that, that isn't necessarily a problem is that the type of the scan is a phi scan, P, but there's also an omega angle specified. So I've got a start of minus 210 for phi, and omega is also minus 210, so this is likely you know, just a mistake on import. Since it's only one scan and there isn't another scan to be relative to this one, this is likely not an issue. So we'll just click OK. Then we'll move on to our indexing. Click on the Lattice Wizard. Click on Peak Search with User Settings. Click on Smart Peak Search. Click OK. Let Chrysalis Pro hunt on the images. We've got 96,000 peaks found. We'll click on unit cell finding. And you can see it's taking a little while. So this is an indication it's having a little difficulty. And I get a cell. It's not the correct cell. And I've only got about 2% of the reflections indexed. So we can inspect what's going on in the log window here and make the log window bigger. And you can see there's a lot of messages here saying no good solution found. You can see then it finds some cell. Below that, the percentage of indexation is about 16.5%. And then it applies what it knows about the experiment back to the data because initially it's using a delta peak table and then it applies your experiment and so we've got 2% indexed which is a really small amount. Now I'll click on EWAL Pro just to show you that I have no peaks here on the right which is an indication that I do not have a cell that's been indexed. If I click down A star, B star, C star, this is just all wrong. This may happen to you when you're importing your data set. I want to stress here that figuring out what is wrong can take a substantial amount of time. It's going to look easier for this webinar because I've already put in the time to figure out what is wrong and I know what to do. So there's nothing that I'm going to be able to do with the data set in this form that's going to allow me to get a correct indexing solution. And the reason is, is the rotation of the phi axis is flipped compared to what is thought from the initial import here. So the only way for me to get this data set to index properly is to import it with the Esperanto importer and flip the phi rotation. So we're gonna skip in our little cheat sheet down to the import Esperanto. So I'm gonna close the data set. This brings me back to my Lysozyme data set I'm going to click on the import export button again. I still want to choose import. And then instead of choosing known image format, I'm going to click on transform unknown image format to Esperanto and click OK. Once I've clicked OK, I'm into the Esperanto importer window where I have to select a bunch of information about the images that I'm importing. In this particular case, I'm not using a generic uncompressed image. I'm using a known format. So I can select it from this drop down list. I will select Dectris Pilatus. Then down here on the right, I will click on Browse to select the first image file here. I'll select this last image file with the second Browse button. So now I have the first image file, the last image file selected. Then I will click on this button here that says import data from headers. And it reads the image headers and it imports the information that it can find. I have one bit of information, one warning here on the bottom in yellow. One warning occurred, there's a parameter that's zero. So what it didn't get was the pixel size and you can see that's highlighted here in a reddish color. So I'll just fill in that this is 0 0.172 millimeter pixels. So that's done. Now I have no errors. I have all the information that I need right now to just run an import. But let's go through a few of the other items and verify that things are correct. So for the Esperanto output, 
I have an opportunity to change the image base name. So for fun, let's just call this SARS-CoV-2 protein. And I'll have some different image names. Now, the other thing that I want to do is change the phi rotation for this data set. The first way to flip the phi rotation would be to just flip the images by 180 degree rotation. So I could select 180 degrees here. That's one way that I could affect it. I'm going to show you a different way. The other thing that I want to do also is turn on this auto gap detection with pixels with a value of minus one because Pilatus gaps have pixel values of minus one. Below that, we're going to turn on this scan info checkbox. And then I have a checkbox here for using frames in the inverse order. So the first image becomes the last image. And that's going to also flip the phi orientation. So keep everything else the same, just flip phi. I'm going to select that box. Before I move on here, I can also correct that small issue I noticed before with omega being defined when there actually isn't an omega. So I'll make omega equal to zero degrees. And then if I switch over here, I can also make phi starting at zero degrees. Omega zero, phi zero, and then the scan start, I will also just make the scan start at phi equals zero. And there we have it. So I've got all the changes that I wanted to implement for this particular import done at this point, and then I can click OK. And you can see at the top right, Crystal's Pro reports that it's transforming the frames. So it's applying these parameters to the frames. It's rewriting them out to the disk. So if I come over to my file tree and go into this data set, go into images, you see these are the original CBF files exist in this directory. But now I also have an Esperanto directory. And the frames are being rewritten out with the new image base name that I gave SARS-CoV-2 protein with a dot Esperanto extension. When the, all the frames are transformed, I get another dialog just to verify the first and last image. I'm going to click on Save Run File. Another dialog pops up where I have another chance to change the distance, wavelength, or the X and Y center of the direct beam. So if you need to make a change, you'd make it now. I'm going to click OK. I get presented with my experiment list. I'm going to select the current experiment. I get the error I have to acknowledge. Click on protein, click OK. And now I'm into the experiment again. I'm going to click on this K here for the image display. And let's quickly go into the lattice wizard and just do another peak search with user settings. Smart peak search, OK. Let it hunt. The peak search is finished, about 60,000 peaks. Click on unit cell finding. And we have a solution. This is a hexagonal primitive cell, 150, 150 by 111, which is actually the correct cell. But only 16.6% .6 of the data set was indexed. Let's take a quick look in the Ewald Explorer just to see. So you can see by how the peaks look on the right that we've got a solution, but it's really not that great at this point. You can kind of see what we look down these, A star, B star, C star. We're close, we're not quite there. So let's exit by clicking on the X. And I mentioned before, a useful option when you're doing these imports is to do this little unit cell finding with options and click on Find Center. Limit the maximum shift. I like to use the previous algorithm or the original algorithm, which is using a search box. If you click on Edit here, you can see the maximum search box you can use is 300 pixels. So I'm going to use the maximum search box and let Chrysalis Pro hunt around and see if it can find a better beam center. So keep in mind that we have 16.6% indexed. And now I'm going to run this again using this find center of the direct beam. And we're going to watch this go. And you're going to see a number here at the end that says the best indexation. Right now it's 
10%. And as it hunts through this, if it finds a better center, the indexation percentage will go up. You'll see this number increase. And if it goes past a certain threshold, it's going to get out of the finding algorithm and allow me to do some other things. Goes up to 13%, 15, 16, 17, 20, 30, 32, 50, and then it pulled me out. So now I'm back to the lattice wizard and you can see I now have 84% of the spots indexed with this same cell, this hexagonal primitive cell, 150, 150 by 111. Click on the Ewald Explorer. And this already looks much better. I've got three sharply defined peaks. If I look down A star, E star, C star, you can clearly see the grid. This is the correct indexation of the sample. And now I can try to refine the solution. Click on Refine Instrument Model. We go up to 84.5%. It tops out around there. I can click on Refine with User Settings. Turn off the automatic selection. Make sure the three wobble vectors are turned on. And I can also refine the aspects of the goniometer. Click OK and see if this gets better. And we're topped out at about 85.5%. Click on the Ewald Explorer again. Everything here looks really good. And we can transform all these into the lattice by collapsing to lattice range here. And you can see how well this looks. So we've got a good indexation now. And we could process this data set just fine. So that's what I wanted to cover today, just to give you an inkling of what to do when importing your data sets into Chrysalis Pro from your favorite synchrotron beamline. Thanks for your attention. See you next time.